Hello everyone and welcome back to Pyre. In the last part we added another new winged member to our group and today we will head onwards towards the glade of something that I can't remember. <laughs> Investigate the surroundings. Let's go. You find nothing of interest while sifting through the tall brush of the under thicket, but then... Southern paths through waking wood, dense patch of trees that for centuries have attempted to strangle one another. What is it, Tizo? Scrackly! Tizo seems to have found a clue to the whereabouts of the lone minstrel's client. The little imp brings you to a, brings to you a strip of bark. It does not seem unusual at first until you notice a message carved onto the inside. You found a bark strip. It must mean something. Trade item. A sturdy root of bark on it is written. Come to Cinder Root S. Notify the group. So, it's some kind of message from this sandalwood guy? Seems that way. Which way to Cinder Root? A hushed clearing south of the Glade of Lou, that's the one. Grounds well travelled by saps knowledgeable in the rites. It is due northwest. Perhaps we can set forth early tomorrow, when the woods are still. Sounds good. Everyone, rest up. Big day coming up. Hey, it's our favourite time! Who are we going to mentor? Okay. Your... Uh, need a, he needs a thousand for the next rank, so he would get the next rank, because you get a thousand for doing it. Uh, the only other one I would consider is Tizo. Uh, Tizo needs 1,150. So that would get him close. And what would that let me do? Deals an additional 10. That is pretty good. As opposed to him, he would get... Uh, oh, banished adversaries remain banished for two seconds longer than usual. That is good. That is very good. Who's going to be in our party, though? Because we definitely want Tizo, but we also kind of definitely want um, Pametha as well, because she's got flying. Huh. That is a tricky one. Oh, man. Yeah, I don't know. I'm sorry, Sir Gilman, but I'm probably never going to use you. Oh, that is, that is going to be so good, though. You know what? This will get him close, and in the next battle, we'll tip him over the edge. So sure. Scrahawk! Tizo is more than pleased to hear you tell him of the rights. You and Tizo spend some time reviewing some of the specific aspects of the rites, such as the properties of the aura. You sense he gained something from it. Lovely. Scree-hoom! Tizo is mulling over your latest teaching with keen interest. Lovely stuff. Anyone? Nope. Did I try? Oh! I did try, I didn't try ringing that. Oh, you just keep right on ringing that bell, sister. Keep at it. Rookie seems to be taking issue with your frivolous use of the nautical bell. After all, there is no sign of a nautical emergency, nor a prepared meal. Oh, I know it's not meal time. It's fine. I'm starting to really enjoy the constant ringing sound, though, now that it doesn't mean anything to me or anyone anymore. Besides, Ringing that bell, it's probably some pretty good exercise, right? And it's good training for my ears, too. You know we care curse of ultra-sensitive hearing, don't you? Well, not anymore, I don't. <laughs> anyway, thanks. I mean that. He storms off. <laughs> Rookie shall never forgive you for abusing the nautical bell. Then so be it. Wow. <laughs> Rookie reappears, laughing heartily. He was only joking. <laughs> Probably. Oh man, what else did I not try? Uh, did I try this? 
Oh. The Lone Minstrel's White Loot affords you glimpses of your journey through the downside through the music it contains. Oh, no, yeah, that was... Yeah, no, I don't... I don't want to do that. Um... Did I try mashing here? Guess so. Did that one. Okay, I guess I did get them all then. Is Ruki going to get mad again if I... Okay, stop it, sister. I'm not kidding. It's bugging me. Please? Sure. <laughs> Off we go to Cinderroot. You have reason to suspect the informant Sandalwood may have come through here. Let's see. Will we finally meet them? Him, her... You arrive on the outskirts of Cinderroot, but once again, the informant Sandalwood is nowhere to be found. What a bugger. You sense your hopes you sense the hopes of your companions waning as your search through the area yields nothing. <laughs> then something startles the little imp Tizo. <laughs> Tizo seems to be crying out in surprise. He has spotted something or someone. <laughs> a tall figure strides forward from the trees, making a sound like laughter. The imp charges toward him <laughs> and leaps right into the figure's arms. They embrace the wooden man. Hail, Tizo, but you look famished here. <laughs> the tall sap produces something that the imp swallows immediately and with great pleasure. Tree like creatures known for their ingenuity, cleverness, and ambition. Having allied with them, the Commonwealth achieved in decades what it could not achieve in centuries. Hmm. <laughs> the lone minstrel nods his head in affirmation. Everyone. I wish to introduce you to my client, Wolfred Sandalwood. Ah, he's a tree. <laughs> Lone Minstrel's client, Hedwin's informant and leader of the Nightwings. It has been too long, Wolfred, sir. There are many temples. Too long indeed, Tariq. I trust your new companions bring some color to your days. Simbaratas. They do, sir. I think you shall find them worthy of the Nightwings. The sap looks upon the lot of you. You cannot sense his thoughts. You did it. We shall see. Then he turns to you. You must be the reader. I'm certain that we all appreciate your efforts here, my girl. Though we shall manage on our own from here on out. Excuse me? No, you fucking won't. You're welcome to continue on with us, of course, though you are free to go. I trust you have been adequately compensated for your time. Thanks as well for looking after all my books. You consider what to say to all of this. Volfred intends to relieve you of your duties to the group. Insist on staying. You have been assured your freedom. You categorically refuse to be cast aside so easily. Bid everyone farewell. The leader of the Nightwings has returned. You can tell when you're no longer wanted. Or remain silent. This cannot be happening. To have come this far only to be brushed aside by some strange sap. No, I'm fucking staying. You stand your ground, meeting Volfred's steady gaze, and assert to him that you do not feel your commitments to and from this group have yet been satisfied. Saberas. Hold on. Volfred, sir, I'm Hedwin. My companions and I are the ones who answered your call. We followed the signs you left for us. Now we're here, thanks to you and also to this reader. Not just a reader, she... She's our friend my friend. She is not disposable. We made her a promise, and our freedoms are now intertwined. Hmm. Volfred smirks at this. Freedom's not something to be traded or exchanged, my boy. I'd hoped that you'd have come to grasp this much by now. <sighs> he breathes a sigh. It seems we've started off on the wrong foot. It's not my wish to sour the occasion, for there's much to do. You have a right you need to get to, do you not? I'll come along, though I though shall not interfere, for it seems you have kinship with this reader of yours. Now then, Tariq. 
I, Volfrid, sir? Come, let's have a chat. Of course, sir. Volfrid strides toward the black wagon, which must have belonged to him. You sense many conflicting emotions among your companions. Volfrid Sandalwood joined you. He knows much of the rites. Welcome him aboard. Yeah, my dude came in trying to just steal my job. <laughs> Not sure how I feel about that. Your wagon cuts through a clearing to arrive at the Glade of Lou, where the stars directed you. Volfred nods his approval, but leaves everyone to their devices. Page revealed the demon. Huh. Emperor Mur. Scarcely could I recognize him when at last I found him. A half-starved a half animal, horns sprouted from his head, a bestial mirror of his blackened reputation. And I, a man who conquered countries, feared my emperor then in such a way as I had never known. My charge had been to slay this man, but when I discovered him, he was already fighting for his life. The little imp, Haub, proved of little help against the sisters of the Arch, whose entire lives were culminating in this instant. I was unable to watch. My heart ached with such pity for the man, and for the love I felt for him when I had served him, that I sprang to his defence. Yeah, that's not how you uh, kill someone, by springing to her defence. As you approach Valfred Sandalwood, you feel very much aware that you reside within his black wagon, rather than he in yours. He studies you in silence for a time, and then... Tariq, if you have a moment... I, Valfred, sir? What is it? This reader, you deem her worthy by your estimation. The lone minstrel tilts his hat in your direction. If you wish my own estimation, Volfred, sir, then I do. Of course, it is not entirely for me to say, but I have seen this reader integrating with the others well. I believe that her achievements are self-evident in having reached Black Basin. Your instructions were deliberately difficult to follow, yet she and the others followed them. Indeed. Your words make sense as ever, Tariq. And what does little Tizo think of her, I wonder? Scrahaki! Tizo indicates that as a matter of fact, he's happy to have you around. There you have it, sir. I see. He continues to examine you. High praise isn't oft spoken by those two, my girl. Nonetheless, I shall be watching you. Now, pardon us. Tariq and I have matters to discuss. They leave without another word, although you think you notice the lone minstrel look your way over his shoulder. Hmm. Has he brought anything new? Is there anything I haven't seen in this room before? I don't think he has. Hmm. It's shopping time. Oh, hey guys. You know, I guess I didn't get the word out about this new franchise which we opened here just now. So, give you a great deal. Just tell your friends, okay? Oh, and hey there, Mr. Sandalwood. Good day to you as well, Ron. So, we got the right light. Once per right, if a bearer's pyre is extinguished, it is instead restored by five. Okay, so it's a last ditch, like, save, I guess. A failed attempt to merchandise the sacred tradition of the scribes. It was intended to prolong the proceedings. <laughs> Dash of stardust. Hmm. Trade item. We're never going to get this bloody 200, are we? It's so good. Mm. Ah, whatever. Come see us again, guys. Man, I can feel my voice start to fail me in this episode. Oh, man. But I just can't stop. This game is so good. I gotta keep going. 
But my voice, it's starting to get, it's starting to get a bit harder to do all the voices. You and your fellow exiles arrived at the sacred site called Glade of Lu, and now look to the stars in the sky to signal the beginning of the next rite. The woods about you bring a sense of tranquility you have not felt in some time, but then you notice one of the trees move. It shuffles towards you and regards you with an exaggerated bow. Well, goodness, by the roots of Lu Sclorion, it would appear the rumours are correct. The Nightwings have returned. Loose Glory and Hundred Minds, third of the eight scribes of the Book of Rites, known as the Wise or the Philosopher. He is said to have fathomed every thought, and his wisdom flows through the river of his name. This is another new song. There's been so many good songs in this game. Or, well, I guess song involves words normally, so just music, another new tune. It's really impressive. Oh, but where are my manners? Hmm. One moment. The sap claws at his mask with his wispy fingers. Much better. H. Manly Tinderstaff at your service. Perhaps you've heard of me? He is a sycophant who seems certain he will land a position of high standing once he's free. My fellows and myself, you perhaps know us as the Chastity. We shall soon stand against you in the rites. For now, I'm just whiling away the time, making small talk. The Chastity, a try bent on exploiting the rights to gain status in the Commonwealth, led by the sap H. Manley Tinderstaff. Now then, as I've introduced myself, your turns, to whom am I speaking? Then in your mind's eye, you see Volfred and hear his voice. Manly Tinderstaff is not to be trusted. Reveal neither yourselves to him nor me. Well? Beneath her mask, Jodariel stares back at him in silence. You suspect Falford's message may have reached every member of the group. Why, now? How very rude indeed. Well, fine. Ignore me. But do so at your peril. Anyhow, once this evening's rite commences, any moment now, then I'm afraid ignoring me won't be an option any longer. Oh, and now I do believe the sky is beginning to show. We'll have to chat again some other time. Now, come along, come along. Manly bows again and wanders off into a clearing, and the stars begin to burn. A certain item lets you repick your mastery rank if you want. Huh. Once again, the stars align themselves before you, reader. Indeed. And here now, at the Glade of Liu, I have to say, you've come so very far. But there are those, such as your adversaries called the Chastity, who have toiled for this too. They know that with their freedom comes great opportunity. It could be yours instead. And so it shall. Show the chastity that the Nightwings are superior. Hang on, is there no... It's just a straight... There's no, like, obstacles in the, in the battlefield? I wonder, oh honoured Nightwings, how well you know these woods. Why, these woods would strangle you. And I'm afraid I could do little to stop them, even if I tried. You might do better to be aware of them. When Jodariel continues to ignore him, he grows upset. Why, you insolent! Then fine, let us begin the dance indeed. He shoves his mask back on in a huff. And allow me to thank you in advance for helping me return unto my proper station in the Commonwealth. Oh, they've got one of each. Let us begin. Okay. Well, wouldn't you know it? Our boy is up front. Hang on. Do we have... No, we don't have a Stardust thing. Oh, what's that? Uh, 
No, 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 no. We're good. Oh yeah. Tizo. Love me some Tizo. Let's go with Pam. She's got no stats or anything. Hang on, we can stuff that on her, I guess. I don't think this will be useful at all, but may as well. Because uh, flying. Flying is just so good. Flying is just so good. And last but not least, we will take this friendly chap. Hang on, why is Jodie out? She's unwilling. Oh. Jodariel refuses to participate in the rites with Pamatha. Oh, okay. Well. Sucks to suck. <laughs> uh, you. We need only we only need to do a couple more with you to get rank four. And the stamina and banishment things are great. Yeah. The choice has cast. Uh let's show Volfred what we can do. Are you quite ready? Finally, O oh Nightwings? May all those masks of yours ensure no harm should come to any of your Lovely countenances. Now come along, come along. Let's give the stars a show. Yeah, I guess there is nothing in the way on this battlefield, huh? Oh, never mind. <laughs> what? May I present to you Humboldt Manly Jr. Why? He is every bit my equal, and is poised to guarantee the Tinderstaff line shall have a bright, bright future. Manly Sapling, which not only has a name, but bears a similar posture and likeness to him. He goes on and on about his sapling for a while. <laughs> Tizo is no longer interested in listening to Manly prattle on. Quite right too. Say no more. Would that he would say no more, either. Now, isn't he just the most precious thing you've ever seen, hmm? The sapling is nothing but an extension of Manly. If he is banished, the sapling should cease to trouble you as well. Okay. Manly and his offspring hold no small degree of influence within the Commonwealth, Breeder. There are many who would welcome his return, though none so much as he himself. What? Already does your adversary's flame begin to flicker. Indeed. Oh, oh, what's this? It seems the woods themselves are closing up in upon our little soiree. Oh, do be careful now. These grasping roots and vines, they may not hold you in such high esteem as I. Ah, okay. Now we see... Your adversary Manly is comfortable in his he longs now for the comfort of his commonwealth estate. Perhaps such wealth ought to be reserved instead for you. Oh dear, the woods are closing in. Uncomfortably close at that. Whatever shall we do? Perhaps if you just stand aside a while, we could put an end to this that much sooner. Oh man, this is going to get real tight in here by the end of this, isn't it? Good. Shit. No. Ah, oh, sugar. Oh, that was close. That was very close. Wrecked, mate. You're getting wrecked. Say, have any of you noticed how it's feeling rather crowded out here? Hmm? Almost as if the Hundred Mines himself presents you being here. Yes, 
I rather think that's it. So, cease with all your scurrying about with that damned orb, and let me handle this. No sorry. Man, even more. <laughs> Alright, you Nightwings, I've had it up to here with you. Or perhaps I've simply had it up to here with all these encroaching plants, these miserable things. Either way, I don't appreciate how you're ignoring me. Yikes, it is getting real clustered up in here. One to go. What's more like that when we are finished here? Ah, oh, bollocks. Nope. Hello. No. Thrust straight into your flames. God damn it. Did you see how close that was? Did you see? Oh, fuck. Oh. God damn it. Got him. Yes, the night wings did prevail. Get bent. Prove no match for them. Oh, I can't believe I took that one hit at the end. God damn it. The ceremony is complete. Scra hee hee ha Tizo is fired up at having prevailed against Manly and the Chastity. That ought to wipe the smug look off that sap's face. We did it. One step closer, everyone. Well, my, my, my. Oh, worry not, oh, Nightwings. I'm not angry with you, honestly. But I am very, 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 very disappointed. I thought, perhaps, that we had something going here between us. You scratch my back, I scratch yours, and all. Instead, however, you decided to spit in my face. Fine. We'll have to see where all your rudeness gets you. Now, ta-ta. Oh my god. Doing his voice is not good. <laughs> Foof. Hey, there we go, Tizo. Karee! Tizo gives thanks to Haub the Swallow for watching over and protecting him. Choose a mastery, indeed. An additional ten. Don't mind if I do. The exiled Tamitha perhaps can learn the errors of her kind. Well, Tamitha, soon I'll be catching up with you with this, whether you no or not you like it. What's she got? Wings of the Matriarch. Rights, masteries, enhancing a harp's swiftness and mobility. When Triesta Tithis led her people to the mountains, they began to train themselves in new ways to survive. When flying, Pametha moves faster than usual. Probably that will be what we get. There were none who could outpace the Matriarch Triesta Tithis as she soared across the skies. Shrike Dash. Pametha can use her dash ability in rapid succession and for less stamina. An uh, Anhone Swiftness. A honed swiftness of wing was necessary to survive upon the mountains where Triesta made her home. Slight of wing, after saluting her adversaries, Pametha instantly switches places with her nearest ally. The high wing remnants bonded together, sisters one and all, and in their solidarity survived the age. Greater, greater clarity. No. Gr greater celerity. Pametha permanently gains plus eight quickness. Oh my goodness. Then I shall find this fallen emperor, for if I should recover him, 
then we may yet have peace. And over here we have ways of the High Wing. Rights, masteries, enhancing a harp's aggressive capabilities. The High Wing were nearly destroyed after St. Trista left them. Those who remained grew strong. Winged Fury for 5 seconds after banishing an adversary, Pametha moves 30% faster. While casting her aura, Pametha can trigger an aura burst that banishes nearby adversaries. Oh, hang on. Often did the matriarch assuage her sister's rising anger and compel them not to war upon the wingless. Trieste and Tithis helped purge the downside of a number of greater titans which ravaged across the land. Relentless Pursuit. If Pamith is banished while Winged Fury's effect is active, she returns twice as quickly. Ha! Huh. Many of her sisters pursued Trieste to the downside, but eventually they all, all concluded that the saint was gone. Natural Superiority. Pamitha permanently gains plus four to quickness, presence, and hope, making her better all round. Okay. Our wings indicate our station in this world, and yet we owe the world our very being. So it's plus four to quickness, presence, and hope, or just plus eight quickness. I think I'd prefer this tree, to be honest. The holy power of the eldest matriarch. Until the next right. That was well done, my girl. I am beginning to see why your companions vouched for you. Don't let it go to your head, of course. Will do. <laughs> that was that was a cool one. I liked that one. I liked that one quite a bit. I'm just slightly mad that we took damage right at the end. After overcoming the chastity rather decisively, you return to your wagon to consider your next move. An adequate performance back there. Adequate? Yes, adequate for the next part of our plan. Go, have your reader there consult the stars, see where they take you next. I'll give you a hint, it's further north. It's going to be high up. Um, did this knight hear you say high up? And it's going to be cold. We'll see. Come on, my friend. Let's have a look outside, then. That plan Volfred mentioned. I just want you to know, I don't know what he means. We're here because we're going to be free again. We won't be living out our days as exiles. That's the only plan as far as I'm concerned. But there's always a catch, right? We'll see what Volfred has to say. Anyway, I'll leave you to it. No matter what, we're getting closer, thanks to you. Once more you look toward the heavens, seek now your destination. Okay, how many have we done? Let's count these up, right? Uh, man, was this the first one? This is so long ago. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is going to be the eighth and final one then. Oh, snap, and it looks different too. Solium, the golden star. The golden star shines bright over the highest mountain in all the downside. So, now you see it for yourself. You are summoned to the north, where looms Mount Alodial, and at the very top, the fall of Solium. The sacred mountain on whose summit the rites were first conceived. Whether its summit is the downside's closest point to the commonwealth or the farthest, none can say. According to the stars, the next rite shall soon commence here. The temple at the highest point in the downside exists to honour the eight scribes. You confirm the stars indicated this exactly. Volfred, sir, how did you know? Volfred smiles back at him, but you sense his thoughts as though he is directing them at you. I too. Oh snap, he has a voice. Forbidden though the words may be. Hey, my voice is pretty similar to his voice, that's good. He turns back to Hedwin. Your reader's skills, while rare, are not unique. But as I said, I'll let her do the job. I see that you have something special going here, which benefits the plan. What plan? I thought this was about our freedom. Oh, fear not, my boy. It is indeed. Plenty of time to tell you all about it on the way. For now, however, you look like you can use some rest. 
and for that matter, so can I, if you'll excuse me. You sense your companions are exhausted from their recent travels. Given the road ahead, you agree it would be best to take the night to recover as much as possible. Indeed. No one to talk to? Nope. And so, that is where we will end it for this part. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And share the videos around if you can. I would really appreciate that. And I will see you next time when we head towards what I assume to be the final right. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you then.